What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and as many of you know I'm a huge supporter of Rockwell Automation products and behind me you always see the HMI which is the PanelView 1000 series. It is an HMI that I've used in many many of my tutorials and especially on my Udemy course for HMI and SCADA development. That being said a lot of you have been asking me for alternatives on how to learn SCADA because of course this HMI model, the PanelView 1000 series can be very expensive for many of us. And furthermore, the software package that runs on this is also a very limited trial. So it's a seven day trial for Factory Talk View Studio ME. And therefore it becomes very difficult to learn those platforms without investing a lot of money into the hardware as well as, well as the software. So the alternative is Inductive Automation. It is a company which has been gaining a lot of traction in the last couple of years. They've started a number of years ago, but uh, they have been growing exponentially and they do have an offering which is called Ignition Edge, which I believe is extremely, extremely uh, capable and I've been learning it myself, but ultimately we're going to be installing it today on what's called a Raspberry Pi. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Raspberry Pi platform, it's essentially a $30 computer which has a CPU, a RAM module, and all the peripheral um, essentially outputs and inputs that you might find in a normal computer. So you have USB ports, you have an Ethernet port, and you have an HDMI output in order to see something on a screen. But ultimately, it allows you to run such applications on a very inexpensive basis. And for an investment of around $50 total, I'll show you some of the other components that I recommend buying as you would install this in an industrial environment. You can get a platform that's going to run your Ignition Edge, which is then going to allow you to gather the tags of the different PLCs that you see behind me, but also different other uh, Siemens PLCs, Alan Bradley, Omron, any PLCs that communicate over Ethernet pretty much, you can get, get the data and you can create very nice panels in your uh, on your computer, but ultimately you can also store tags on a SQL database, you can create HMIs, you can create just different views on how to show data, you can also create alerts through email, through voice, so it's extremely, extremely capable, but we'll get into all of that in later videos. That being said, today we're going to install Ignition Edge, I'm going to show you step by step how to get it onto a Raspberry Pi, how to get communicating with the Raspberry Pi, and how to uh, bypass all the errors that might come up during the installation process. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the hardware side. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. All right, so here's the Raspberry Pi on my desk. For those of you who are familiar with the different Raspberry Pi models, this is the 3. And as you can probably tell if you're familiar with these modules, I've already installed a couple of heat sinks. So the Raspberry Pi runs quite a bit, um, I guess, higher once Ignition Edge is installed and it's pulling a lot of data in and into a database. So it's highly recommended not to just purchase the Raspberry Pi, but also essentially an enclosure with some heat sinks. So I got this enclosure off AliExpress. I'll put some links down below where you can buy it. And it came with the enclosure with the three heat sinks, two on the top and one on the bottom, as well as a fan. So this is something, like I said, I would recommend purchasing if you're going to leave this on for long periods of time. That being said, let's quickly talk about the Raspberry Pi models. So there are going to be some older versions, which I will show you right now. So this is the older version, which I believe had only 256 um, gigs of RAM. So that's not going to work very well because I'll show you once again, a setting in ignition, which requires a lot more RAM than that specific version. There's also going to be some inc incompatibilities. Therefore, I highly recommend that you purchase version four, which is the latest, and that should be $35. And if you want to spend a little bit extra for the RAM and go all the way up to $55, that would be even more um, that would be even better for Ignition Edge. That being said, the next thing you're going to need is of course an SD card, which is going to run our OS. So here I have a 16 gig SanDisk memory card. You can go up higher, but it's going to be very important that you flash it in the proper format at which we're going to look 
in a moment. Next, you're also going to need a power supply. So the Raspberry Pi runs on a USB port, which is located right here. And that's going to be a five volt USB, like I said, power, you can run it off your laptop. But ideally, if you place it inside of a panel or anything, that's going to be a bit more permanent, you can either have a 110 to USB converter like so. And of course, you'll need a cable as well. So that's just a micro USB uh, cable, which plugs into the power supply and then the Raspberry Pi. And the other thing for the network. So since we're going to be talking to PLCs, which are on a physical network, we're going to need an Ethernet cable with RJ45 connectors on either side. And in my case, I'm also using a an industrial DIN rail mounted switch. So this is an eight port switch. You can definitely purchase a much cheaper version of a similar switch. It's just an unmanaged switch that you can use inside of your panels. Or if you want to, or if you have on hand a Stratic switch, then that would be even better, which is what you saw behind me sitting in that Pelican case. That being said, that's pretty much all the hardware you need. Let's start configuring our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need is the software that's going to be the operating system of the Raspberry Pi. And what it's called essentially is the new out of the box software or more commonly known as noobs. So this is the software that we're going to be loading onto our SD card. And you can download it from the official raspberrypi.org slash download slash noobs website or URL. And in my specific case, I prefer to always get the offline and network install because Usually there's interruptions with the Wi-Fi and I've had it um, essentially corrupt during installations. So what I do is I download the zip and I'm going to save that in my specific folder. I'm going to go into my local disk. And then just so I know where exactly I'm storing this and I'm going to click save right there. While that's being saved, let's talk about the SD card. So I'm going to open my file manager and here what you're going to see is that there's going to be a lot of different removable disks and there's going to be this boot folder and recovery. And essentially what happens is that the Raspberry Pi, once it's loading the OS, it's going to break down the memory card or the SD card partitions into what's going to hold the OS and some of these separate things. Now, in order to restore that back to the initial condition, there's going to be this software, it's called the SD card formatter. And you can download it just by Googling that name SD card formatter in Google. And there's going to be different versions in, um, in Mac OS or Windows. And here we're going to be selecting which memory card we want to format. And in this case, you'll notice that there's going to be many of them. And some of them, like I said, they're, they're just different partitions of the same memory card. So I'm going to select this recovery disk. And I'm going to select quick format, you'll notice that the capacity on the file explorer is going to be different than what we're seeing here. And in reality, it is a 16 gig SD card, like I've mentioned before. So it's important to make sure that you're formatting the right, um, the right hardware. So quick format, and then I'm going to call this our Pi SD. And we're going to click, we're going to double check that the type SDHC. Let's see here, we're going to format and do you want to continue? Yes. So it's very important that you use this tool because it's going to format in the right file type. So the file system needs to be FAT32. And that's going to be the only thing that's going to run on the Raspberry Pi. If it's anything different, then it's not going to work. So let's close out of this. And you'll notice that now I only have this SD card listed as our Pi SD. And at this point, we can double check if the if the noobs has downloaded completely. So I'm going to show it in folder. And what you need to do at this point is just right click the software that you've downloaded the zip folder, and we're going to extract all. And we're going to browse to the SD card. So I'm going to select this PC and then select the Raspberry Pi SD card that we just flashed. And I'm going to click select folder. And I'm going to extract. So at this point, once this is extracted, this is pretty much everything you need to get started with the Raspberry Pi. Of course, this doesn't have the ignition edge yet. This is just the layer which essentially holds the OS of the Raspberry Pi and allows us 
to uh, connect remotely to it in order to configure the system further. All right, so unfortunately, there's no better way of capturing what's going on on the Raspberry Pi besides just filming the screen with a camera. So the quality may not be the best. That being said, I did want to show you all these key steps uh, one by one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Raspbian full recommended, and I'm also going to change my keyboard to English US, and I'm going to hit this install button. So this is going to tell you that you're installing the OS system. So it's definitely going to erase any data that you have on the SD card. So we're going to hit yes. And the Raspberry Pi is going to essentially unpack all of the files and it's going to install the OS, which as I've mentioned before is called noobs. And the next step that I always like to do is going to be to set a static IP address so that we can remote desktop into the Raspberry Pi. And at that point, we're going to be filming the screen through the software rather than using a camera. So it is going to be become a little bit better. Now, one warning that I want to give you is that you should not interrupt this process. This may cause your SD card to corrupt or just cause errors on your installation. And you're going to have to sit through this again. And this usually takes anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. So do give your Raspberry Pi a chance and just let it install everything it needs. And I'll see you guys shortly. All right, it seems that the OS has been successfully installed. I'm going to press this OK button and the Raspberry Pi is going to reboot. What you're seeing right now is the reflection off the monitor and the Raspberry Pi is booting back up. We should see an image in just a second. There we go. The next steps are going to be quite straightforward. What we need to do is connect to the network and we will have to change the static IP address in order to be able to remote into the Raspberry Pi. And that what that's going to do for us is essentially you can have the desktop of the Raspberry Pi through your laptop or the computer that you're using to program things. So here we are. So welcome to the Raspberry Pi. We're just going to cancel out of this. All right, so now that we are on the desktop, what I like to do first is to connect to the internet. And we do have this enable Wi-Fi. What we're going to do is first of all, select the country and I'm currently in Canada. So I'm going to scroll down until there is no Canada. Interesting. There we go, Canada. We're going to press OK. And at this point, I should be able to connect to my network on the wireless side. So I'm going to select the network and I'm going to type in the password. OK. Press OK. And so what's cool about the Raspberry Pi is that there's going to be a wireless card as well as a wired port. So what that allows us to do is essentially to download files and be able to get Ignition Edge directly from the Raspberry Pi. And then at the same time, it's going to have an IP address on the Ethernet port, which is going to go to my private network from which I'm going to uh, connect remotely. So I'm going to issue a couple of commands in order to change the static IP address of my physical Ethernet uh, card. So I'm going to type in sudo space nano slash etc slash dhcpcd.conf. And let's see if this file has anything. So this file contains the definitions for our networks. I'm going to scroll down and create essentially a new entry for my static IP configuration. This could be put in anywhere, but usually you do want to, let's see here, there's going to be two interfaces, like I said. So this is going to be the static IP address over here. So this is interface ethernet zero, which is what we're looking for. And I'm going to just uncomment that out and I'm going to give it a static IP address. So in my case, based on my network settings, this is going to be a one here. And then this is going to be a six. We're not going to bother with IPv6 or routers or the domain name servers. So we should be able to just work it like such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save. So control X and it's going to tell me to save the modified. I'm going to press Y and press enter. So we've changed the IP address. We need to reboot the Raspberry Pi. And from this point on, I should be able to remote desktop. So we're going to switch to the normal uh, view that you normally see from my laptop. All right, so the Raspberry Pi has been placed onto the private network. And before we start 
the remote desktop, I always like to ping the device first. So 192.168.1.6 is the IP we gave it. And as we can tell, the response is positive. So everything is communicating as expected. Next, I can launch the remote desktop app from Windows. And I'm going to type in the IP, which was already said before. So I'm going to hit connect, hit yes. And at this point, we're going to be asked for a username and password. So the defaults are going to be Pi and then Raspberry. And I'm going to press OK. And at this point, essentially what's happening is we're remoting onto the desktop of our Raspberry Pi, which is sitting on the network. And essentially this allows us to control the Raspberry Pi in a much easier way. There's no need to have an external monitor. There's no need to have two sets of keyboards and mice. And we can do pretty much everything that we've been doing so far. So we can start the terminal. But what we need to do next is we need to download a version of Ignition which is specific to the ARM processors and that's called the Ignition Edge. And like I've mentioned at the beginning of this video, you may choose to download Ignition and launch it and run it on your own uh, laptop or desktop. That being said, I do recommend that you essentially install it on a separate machine and if you have a separate computer or PC that you want to use for this that's awesome if not like I said the Raspberry Pi is a great option so I'm going to just search in Google ignition edge download and press enter so chromium is just a browser which is a uh, lower end version of Chrome and let's see here ignition edge so we should be able to go to the website of ignition and you can just use this link on or you can pretty much uh, search for it on google so download ignition edge and once again you can download it on your laptop and then transfer it through the network to your raspberry pi or you can do it the way i'm doing it right now which is essentially downloading through the wireless network of the raspberry pi it is going to be a little bit slow like i said because we're remoting in we're also launching browsers and the raspberry pi is not um, not a fast computer per se, so it's lagging a little bit as you can see on the screen right now. But we are going to download a different version. As you can see, they are trying to detect a version which is not going to be Windows for us. And let's just scroll down. There's going to be other versions. Like I said, because we do need to select a an ARM-based version. So we're going to scroll down through all of these. And what we're going to choose is this uh, Ignition Edge Linux ARM version. And this is going to be, like I said, for ARM processors. We're going to click on this, fill out the information. So let's, I'm just going to go through this really quickly. And you can put in whatever, obviously, put in something that makes sense. Okay, so that looks like it worked. So we are going to download Ignition Edge. It is going to take a little bit of time. As you can see down here, it's uh, probably can't see that well. But it's going to take five minutes to download it through the network. So we're going to speed through this and then we're going to install Ignition Edge. All right, so it looks like we've got the archive downloaded. We can launch the command prompt. And from here, we're going to extract the files and then launch the server. So here we're going to change directory into our downloads folder. So let's see, change directory into downloads and we're going to have to unzip. So sudo unzip dot slash ignition. And we're going to put that in slash user slash local slash ignition, which is the recommended folder structure on the ignition website. Although you can extract it anywhere. Okay, so that the, did not like that. So let's do slash user downloads. Can we do it like that? No such file. If we just do it, so let's do this ignition edge. Okay, so that's fine. So we're just going to create a new folder inside downloads in order to store all of our files. And We'll give it a couple of minutes. It does take a little bit of time because the application, I believe, was a little over a gig, a little less than a gig. So it's going to take a few moments on the Raspberry Pi before it extracts everything. And then we can launch the server. Okay, so it looks like the extraction is complete. We can double check that the folder is there and then change into the directory ignition edge. 
Yes. And we do need to make a couple of files executable. So I'm going to copy paste a command which is on ignition edges website. So I'm just going to essentially allow a few files to be executable. And then we're going to launch the ignition server. So once again, I'm just pasting a command. So ignition start and we're going to see if there's no issues, then once it's finished decompressing the runtime, it should give us an ID. And at that point, we should be able to go to the gateway. That being said, there's going to be one last thing that I always like to do with this installation, which is to run it on boot. And that essentially allows us to um, it allows us to start the server without having to every single time go through these instructions and then starting it manually. So what I'm going to run is I'm going to run another command once the server is started. So it looks like everything is complete without any errors. I did have some errors last time I ran this test. So everything seems to be okay. So starting ignition gateway and everything looks good. So we did get an ID right there. I am going to, like I said, run another command. So I'm just going to paste that in. And this is going to open the file, which is going to start different software. And I'm going to scroll down within this file until the last exit zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few lines. I'm going to paste a comment. So start ignition. And below this, I'm going to paste a line once again from the ignition website, which just pretty much starts the file. I will have to change the location, of course. So instead of being user local, this is going to be, let's see here home slash pi slash downloads slash ignition edge and let's just double check that the that the file that we're executing is in here so ignition.sh ignition.sh so that's right there okay so that looks good everything's okay i'm just going to delete this empty line and then i'm going to control x and of course i'm going to save press enter okay so we can close out of this what we're going to do is there's going to be two different options which we can go by so from here we can launch the browser once again and we can enter local we can type in local with a um, with a port number of 8088. So let's see local host 8088. And if everything is okay, there we have it. So the edge gateway is definitely configured. We are going to get started in a different video. That being said, before we conclude, I do want to show you that at this point, if the Raspberry Pi is on the network, you can open a browser on your laptop or desktop. And here you can type in 192.168. Okay, it looks like I didn't have a typo in that port configuration. So here we are, we can configure the server from our main computer. So that's definitely very helpful. You don't need to always remote desktop at this point, you can configure everything on the server through, like I said, your main computer. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.